Assalamu alaikum. My name is Yasin. And on this beautiful day, I would like to share with you a little bit about my life. I was born in the city of Chicago on the south side. I was born into a family of five, me being the fifth. I have one older brother and one older sister. We were a very close family, spending many days with each other, having fun, enjoying life. We were a Christian family. We used to go to church every Sunday, celebrate Christmas with each other, celebrate Easter and other holidays. Um, like this, we used to travel um, to meet other family members. Um, my mother and father, they're both from the south, from Arkansas, if anyone knows where that is. Um, this is the land of Bill Clinton. We used to go there to visit my mother and father relatives, and all the family was very close. I was uh, the luckiest uh, to say of the three of us because um, the public schools in the city of Chicago, they weren't the best. And my parents had the ability to send me to a private school at that time. And majority of the private schools in Chicago are Catholic schools. So my early education and pretty much from um, first grade elementary all the way through high school, I spent it in Catholic school. This uh, was a different um, environment for me, um, opposed to my home environment, because my home environment, we um, practiced the Baptist religion. And at school, I had to practice the Catholic religion. Um, my mother, she um, chose this for me because she wanted me to have a good education. And my father, he was the same. They were very um, um, pushing hard so that I could have a good education. They wanted to me to have the best things in life, and education was the, uh, was the key. With a strong focus on education and a home filled with love and support, Yassin grew up in a tight-knit Christian home. His family saw education as the means to his success, but life had many twists and turns in store for him. So, um, I was a good student. I used to get good grades. And I used to like to um, please my parents. Also, I um, used to like to spend time with my, with, my, with my sister. She was very fun, and I used to like to tag along with her and my brother as much as I can. I grew up um, playing sports a lot. I was very good at basketball and football, baseball. I used to love sports, even gymnastics. A lot of people don't know that about me, but I was a gymnast. Um, sports was um, part of my life. Every day, sometimes I played maybe two or three different sports in a day with, amongst myself and my friends. When, uh, and we enjoyed it like this. Um, one of the best times that I uh, remember is um, being at a a basketball game and, and scoring uh, the, win the, winning, um, the winning shot. And um, I had um, a lot of friends cheer me on, and I used to like this to be um, cheered. I, I like to fit in with the, with the people and for the people to like me. Yassin has a likable personality. He made a lot of friends and enjoyed interacting with others through sports. He liked winning. The conflict between his religion at home and that of his school made him look into religions in more depth. He came to understand that there are many ways to practice Christianity. So I remember when I won the game and the people were cheering me on. This was a exciting moment in my life. And from that point on, I wanted to always achieve to be the best at whatever I do. And this was one of the teachings that my father had told me, to always be the best at what you do, and as long as it's something good. So I remember many times being with my father. We used to go early in the morning and go to places and fish, and we used to just relax and, and enjoy like this. Me, my father, my mother, she used to like to fish, and I used to go with her often as well. Um, we lived close to the, to the lake, to Lakeshore Drive, so... We had a long beach, so we used to go there sometimes and um, 
get a chance to see the sunrise, and I used to like this. Um, my father, he later um, became sick. So during this point in my life, I was in elementary school, and then my father became sick. I used to have to take care of him, so I um, used to be restricted sometimes from going to um, play sports because uh, kids, they like to go out and play, but, you know, sometimes you got to stay at home and help. Um, but this was no problem. Um, until my father, he became very sick and he became hospitalized. At this point, I felt that um, because my brother, he had grown up and he had left the house, moved to another state, I felt that um, now I have to be uh, the man of the house. And after a couple of years, uh, my father being in and out the hospital, he finally went into the hospital for a period of time. And um, my sophomore year of, uh, of high school, my father passed away. I have my mother. Um, I know that she wants to um, be a good mother. She does a lot of things. She wants to pay for my education, and I felt I can't do this. I have to pay for my own education. I need shoes. I need to pay for my own shoes. I need clothes. I need to pay for my own clothes. I have to be a man to take care of myself. His father's illness and ultimate death made Yassin feel responsible for himself and his family. His fun-loving childhood seemed to disappear as he was forced to face the harsh realities of life at an early age. As I was saying, I grew up having a good life, had the opportunity to um, study in a good um, school, which gave me a good education. And I did graduate from high school. But I'm going to rewind it back to the time when I was a sophomore in high school, and this was the time when my father died. Now, just like a coin, there's two sides you have of, of everything. I had the good side of life. But my outside environment, it wasn't so good. The neighborhood that I grew up in was a heavy gang neighborhood, just like majority of the neighborhoods in the city of Chicago, gangs and drugs. So after my father had died and I decided I want to be a man now, I got to make my own, I got to get my own, I decided to hit, hit the block as we call it, which means I started to sell drugs. At this time, I was just selling drugs just maybe on the weekends, just to make some money so I could be able to get some shoes I want or some clothes, some jewelry, cell phones or beepers at the time. This is what the things that people were after. Um, but I entered a different lifestyle because along with this, you start to see a whole lot more pain and suffering. A lot of things come with selling drugs and being involved with gangs. You start to see a lot of people get hurt. A lot of people get shot. A lot of people get killed. And so, most of the time, it's innocent people. As I was growing up, as I was going through this times, many kids that was my age were getting shot, getting killed. Almost every day, people that I knew, I've seen people right in front of me, laying out on the ground, dead, no more life, young, innocent. This was, became a normal thing. So all we did was wanted to retaliate. It's just one gang shooting against shooting the next gang. Every day this was the lifestyle: selling drugs. Um, we started to roll the blunts, the, uh, the partying, and living like this. His close, loving family and school life had cushioned him from the pain, suffering, and death that filled his society. With his father's death, he became exposed to gangs, drugs, and criminal activity. His way of life changed as he witnessed more and more pain and death. So once I got deep into this lifestyle, I think what happened was that I ended up brainwashing myself thinking that this was the only life, that there was nothing else. Once you start, start to taste the money, start to taste the cars, start to taste... Um, the so-called good and pleasures in this, I saw that there was nothing else. But at the same time, I saw that the only end was either dead or in prison, life sentence or repeated, in and out of prison. And this is where I saw people getting in and out. And the sickness of this lifestyle, you think that you're not going to get caught, but
But at the same time, you prepare yourself because you know that one day you're going to be in there too. As I was living my life selling drugs, committing crimes, committing all type of sins, I started to reflect on my life and how I was raised by my parents and the morals and values that they were trying to teach me. I was remembering that the things they were telling me about God and heaven and hell and all the things that I was learning. So I was looking at my life and what was going on around me, the people that was around me. And I was saying to myself that it's not right. I got to do something different. I got to change. I need to stop this. But at the same time, it was hard to stop and change when you start to benefit from the money and you say, okay, it's good, you become attracted. I remember also hearing about the word Islam throughout different points in my life. At eight years old, I heard Islam. My first time I heard this word was on TV. So I wanted to know more about it. Uh, the program was saying that Islam is the oldest religion and it's the religion of people and a lot of people from Africa, this was their religion. And a lot of people that uh, were Americans and that they were, uh, they were considered, brought to America as slaves, a lot, a lot of them, their religion was Islam. Also, in school, in history books, it talked about Islam, so I kept hearing about Islam. What is Islam? But the information that I got was very little. So my life was going through ups and downs, but for the most part, I felt everything was going how I wanted it to be. I kept getting more and more money. I was getting the cars and things that I wanted, um, able to do whatever I wanted to do. So I thought, as I was thinking to myself, as I was going through my life about the different things that was going on around me, the things that I was seeing, the things that I was participating in, seeing people um, dying around me, going to jail, going to prison, um, going to church, seeing people partying and clubbing and doing all this stuff. I was wondering, is the life that I'm living correct? Is the life they live living correct? What's the right things we should be doing? What is the purpose of our life? Why are we really here? And is this okay? Because Many of the people that I was surrounded by um, went to church, but the lifestyle didn't seem like it was the right life um, that, uh, that, was po that was pleasing to God. I felt that we need to do more than just go to church and say, um, I believe in God, I believe in Jesus. Um, and as I was started to think about the times that I heard about Islam and what Islam is, this other religion, along with um, in school studying, um, theology and the different religions. I reflected more and and had come to a conclusion that God must be real. Um, there must be uh, something else after this, um, the heaven and earth. So I, I believe that these things must be real. And when I was doing all these wrong things, the stuff started to eat at me inside, and my consciousness, my conscience was bothering me. Um, is this is this right? I knew deep down that this wasn't right, and I remember my mother kept telling me, just kept saying, "Boy, whatever it is that you're doing, you need to stop it. Whatever it is you're doing, you need to stop." I said, "I'm not doing anything. I'm okay." You know, only lying to myself because she knew uh, that I was doing wrong things. So I started to read more, uh, try to get back in touch with. Um, uh, what, what am I supposed to be doing? Get, to, get, get back connected to God. And so I started to search and I started to ask questions and um, go to the ministers and priests and preachers, different people, and ask them about God and explain these things to me because all throughout my life when I was growing up, I never really understood the, how Jesus fit in the picture. One place they say that he's a prophet of God one place to say he's the son of God, one place to say he's God the Father the Son, and that was very confusing. I didn't understand that, and I didn't understand. I, I I saw that Jesus from the what they showed was a good person, a good man, but as being God and dying on the cross, that didn't um, make sense to me. That didn't sit well to me. 
So I wanted to understand this trinity thing. And the only thing that answer I get was, it's a mystery, or you just got to believe it. That was it. No one could tell me anything or explain this to me. So I started to really wonder what's going on. Pulled between the temptations of life and a guilty conscience, Yassine realized that he was really looking for happiness, which was something that he had not found. He had tried to find happiness through wealth, material objects, but the dangers and pain he experienced overwhelmed any glimmer of joy. After my father had died, I had begun to get into the life of crime, gang lifestyle and selling drugs. The drugs was the major focus because what I wanted to do was get money. At first I made the excuse that I just wanted to get money so I can get the things that I need so my mother won't have to do it for me. So I just used to sell drugs um, on the weekends, just so, some days. But it, once you get into the lifestyle, which is what happened to me, I became trapped. As I achieved one goal, I wanted to get this, I wanted to get more. So the, the, the excitement and the, the thirst for more material things, it, it captured me. So I wanted to work harder and harder and harder until it became a daily thing that I was doing. This was my, became a part of my life. And then who could resist all the temptations that money brings? The, the things that you're able to enjoy from it. I couldn't. But at the same time, I knew what I was doing was wrong. I was looking at what was going on around me, the things that I was seeing, the people that I was around, the so-called pimps, the so-called players and the hustlers, the money getters, call, shot callers, all this. And I was looking at their lives. They were all after the same thing, some type of happiness. But when you really looked at to these people, when you really looked at them, they weren't happy. Just like I wasn't happy. They were really dead. Not uh, dead as in not moving, but dead as in spiritually. And it showed in their face. And I began to notice that in this life, things that you might say, I won't do this, I won't do that. All of a sudden, you begin to do these things. You do what comes with the lifestyle. So I became involved in all type of sins, anything that you can imagine. I saw, saw it, witnessed it, or was a part of it myself. So this troubled me inside. And I began to always remember to um, pray, to ask God for forgiveness, because this was some things that was taught to me, to ask God for forgiveness. But yet I continued to do what I was doing. It was nothing to tell me that what I was doing um, was, was okay. You do what you do, and then you just ask for forgiveness, and everything would be okay. But I knew that there had to be more to do than that. And I heard um, about Islam. At the same time, I was in an environment that was a separatist environment. So um, there were people that brought forth Islam, as we know, some of us may be aware of, like the Nation of Islam. So I was attracted to groups like this because it also told uh, people of color that you're empowered, that you have some, some dignity to, to yourself, and that you're better than uh, the people that oppressed you. And they said that your religion is Islam. So this also wakened up my, my sense of what, what is Islam? What is it about? And as I looked into what they were teaching about this, it sounded good as, to me as well. I also found that it also, um, also uh, allowed me to still know the person I knew, which was Jesus. It was no problem with him, except for he wasn't, um, as was uh, perceived, uh, people say that he's a, uh, some white guy with long hair, blue eyes, and all this, but who he really was. He felt spiritually dead, and it became easier and easier to commit sins. But he had an overshadowing feeling of discomfort, knowing he was doing wrong. In the midst of this turmoil, he learned more about Islam. Hovering between his old lifestyle and what he was learning, he began his spiritual journey. 
His new knowledge about Islam, accompanied by a growing sense of peace, came to him at the hands of Talib Alamin. Who Jesus was, because this was the question that I always had in my life. Is Jesus God? Is he the son of God? Is he one of three? Is he two or three? Is how they all one? What's the mystery? And he taught me Surah Qul Hu Allahu Ahad. Surah Ikhlas. It's a chapter in the Quran. And it talked about God being one, eternal, having no partners. There's nothing like him. He has no sons. And he's not the son of anyone. And that made sense to me. He also taught me... Um, how, how, to, how to pray to God. And the one thing that he told me, he said, when you're ready to really change your life and get yourself together, just turn to God and ask him for guidance. You don't need to go to any priests or preachers or anything like that. Say Hail Marys and, and make confession. God, he hears you. Go to him directly and ask him to help you and to guide you because he's the only one that can get you out of your situation. So once I was released, I returned back to the same lifestyle. It was waiting for me and I was waiting for it. But this time things really get got to sink in deeper because now more and more people around me that was so-called close to me and friends, things were really changing. People that I felt that was close to me as far as my friends were getting shot and killed. And, and people that I thought were my friends, they were becoming people that was not trustworthy and honest. You know, that even tried to, uh, it, it seemed like at some point we may even harm each other. So we, I began to distance myself and not trust anyone. And this is a life that uh, is not normal. Get money, enjoy life and die. That was the attitude of Yassin's old friends. But his mind flooded with questions as he sought to truly understand the purpose of life. He was determined to exert effort and read. He turned to his creator asking for guidance and was ready to serve God. His serious search had begun and he was enthusiastic. I had many conversations. No one can answer this question. What is our purpose life? People just said, get money and die. That's it. Live life, get money, have fun and die. Enjoy yourself. You only live once. This is what they were telling me. So I came to a very point where I started to isolate myself from people. And sometimes, even though I'm with people, it would be as though I'm by myself. Because I really wasn't, wasn't there. Because I, I wasn't trusting these people. I was acting as, I felt as though they were someone else. And I, we're different. But yet, this is the same crowd that I tended to love. To be with all the time. But yet, I didn't trust not one person. So one day, one night, I mean... I was driving in my car, and I just felt a very sense of sadness, like, I, I need to turn back to God. What do I need to do? And I remember what Talib Alameen said. And I went home, and I remember what he said about um, washing myself. He said, well, um, ablution. So I did this, and because he said, you can't go to God if you're impure and all these different things. So after I made ablution, I raised my hands to God, and I said, God, guide me to the straight path. Whatever it is, guide me to it, because I don't know what's the straight path. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. And then what happened? The next day, I was caught by the police again. 